There is an elementary school in Shure that offers some sort of sanctuary, a place of refuge for people on the run. But they have arrived in a city now gripped by a humanitarian emergency, and there is little here to keep them alive. There is no food, and there is no shelter, and there is no uh, the basic needs. So, uh, if you can, you have to address the world to come soon. A human tide of 300,000 are now camping in this beleaguered city after a hazardous journey from western Tigray. And many here, both young and old, are struggling. How are you? Tell me how you're feeling. Some have been forced to flee their homes. Others have been banished by militias from the neighboring region of Amhara. The US government has called it ethnic cleansing. Lady Tawaldebrahan and her daughter have just arrived in Shure. This must be a really difficult time for you. <laughs> She's a civil servant from a city called Humera, and she says she's lost everything she owns. Do you know where you are going to sleep tonight? <laughs> There's not much space at Sahaya Elementary and conditions at five other camps in the city are the same. The air filled with smoke and the continuous sound of people coughing. It's so claustrophobic in here, there's barely any room to move inside and new camp residents are arriving all the time. Although I don't think you can call this a displacement camp. It's more like a test of human endurance. <laughs> How are you feeling? No food, no services at this elementary school. 28-year-old Fitzam Tekla Hymanot suffers from a mental illness, and his father, a priest, has decided to keep him in chains. It's the only way they can cope. Aid organizations weren't permitted in Shure until recently, and the local hospital can't meet demand. This is the corridor off the main reception. They are short of beds and routine medication, like basic pain relief. This man was stitched up without an anesthetic during our visit. The war in Tigray has put everyone under terrible pressure, says the director. As a physician, uh, we, are, we, we, we are doing our best, but it's really harsh, the environment is harsh, the time is harsh. And still our staffs are also, uh, still they have this psychological trauma, including me, psychological trauma, because one of our best pharmacy staff was killed with his family by the air troops. Gunshot wounds and shrapnel injuries have become a matter of routine, but some patients can't just be patched up. Eight-year-old Al Abraham was shot in the head by militiamen in western Tigray. His mother, grandmother and brother were killed. I don't have an idea because he's too young, he's eight years old. Let alone him, his little brother is five years old, killed by them. Even they thought that this was already dead, but later on, as you can see, there is two sides of the injury, you can see. One was, it's a bullet injury, and it was in, and by that side it also, the bullet was get out. They've been caught in the middle of a battle for power, and the war in Tigray will never leave them. John Sparks, Sky News, in Shure.